We heard several weeks ago from whistleblowers that this, that uh, that Steve Miller came up with this uh, before we heard it about it from any other source, and probably Steve Miller, who seems to be the boss of everybody on immigration, ought to come before Congress and explain some of these policies. That's Congressman Jerry Nadler, the New York Democrat. He heads up the all-powerful House Judiciary Committee. Well, Nadler, he wants Trump advisor Stephen Miller to answer questions about the president's proposal to ship migrants to sanctuary cities. The president, he's been on a tour to terror about immigration. Here are just some of the most recent posts. Quote, Congress should come back to D.C. now and fix the immigration laws and those illegal immigrants who can no longer be legally held will be subject to homeland security given to sanctuary cities and states. In the meanwhile, the president also reportedly wants to ratchet up the family separations policy that has split up thousands of families. But the administration, they can't even keep track of all the kids who've already been taken away from their families. The Justice Department said in a court filing that it wants two years, two years, to find all the children, and it'll take a year just to review 47,000 cases of children taken into custody. Well, the American Civil Liberties Union is suing the government over this, and my next guest, he's the lead attorney. Lee Gallant, he is the deputy director of the ACLU's Immigrant Rights Project, and he no joins us now. And Lee, I want to get to the family separations, but, but first, the idea that somebody thought it was a good idea, and even when they tried to backtrack, the president gleefully said, I'm basically going to take women and children and use them as fodder and dump them on the streets of cities in America as political payback. You couldn't make that up if you tried. This is like, you know, straight out of an Oliver Twist. I, I, I can't believe it until I heard him say it three times. Yeah, well, hopefully it's not going to actually happen because it's unlawful and it's bad policy. I mean, these are human beings we're talking about. The, the other thing that it's, I think, critical to understand is that these so-called sanctuary cities, they do not refuse to turn over immigrants who have serious crimes. They're simply saying comply with the law and get a warrant like you always do. And so all the federal government has to do if they want these immigrants is to get a warrant from a court. The other thing I would say is, you know, if you talk to police chiefs who are on the front line in cities, what they would tell you is we don't want to be an arm of ICE and enforce immigration law because then our communities lose trust in us and we cannot solve serious crimes. So it's the police chiefs in these cities that are really pushing back on making their officers into federal immigration agents. Uh, we come back to family separations. The last time you and I talked, it was really more revelatory as to just how bad the problem was, a problem, frankly, of the government's making. They have been straight in terms of when they really started this program, about the scope of the program, about how many families had been broken up, kids separated. And then when confronted with it all through really your lawsuit, they basically said, not my problem. You guys go figure it out. Well, since then, we now hear the president wants to resurrect it and, in fact, double down on steroids, doing it all over again. Put a face, if you could, on just how bad the problem is right now with how many separated kids there are and just how ill-equipped the government is to put them back together. Yeah, exactly. So we were shocked to hear that the administration may be thinking about trying to do family separation again. First of all, it would run completely counter to the injunction, so it couldn't be done. But you would think that after all this time of seeing the faces of these children and hearing what separation has done to them, permanently damage them, there wouldn't even be a thought of restarting separation. So hopefully we don't see it start again. But even if it doesn't start again, family separation is very much on the table now in two different ways. First of all, we thought we had come to the end of separating all of reuniting all the families that had previously been separated now we found out through an internal government watchdog report that there may be thousands of more families that were separated in the past we have asked the government to identify them they at first refused the court said no this is a civilized society we're going to identify them 
Then most recently they said, okay, you want us to identify them? We want up to two years to identify these families. I mean, that could be in almost an entire lifetime for some of these small children. So in the next few minutes, we will be filing a brief and having a hearing tomorrow to talk about whether the government needs two years. What we will propose is that they do it in three months maximum. We think that's more than enough time. You cannot leave these children out there stranded for another two years. The other problem that I don't think people realize is family separation is still ongoing. So we're not just talking about the past separations. They are continuing by their own admission to separate children. But now what they've done is try and find a loophole. They've said, okay, we know the court said you can't just separate for no reason. Now we're going to separate whenever we think the parent might be a danger to the child. But what they're doing, we've just found out, is unilaterally declaring the parent a danger without giving the parent a chance to fight that. And so we've thought, okay, well, these must be very serious crimes if they're separating the parent from the child. Then we find out it may be because the parent had a DUI or drove without a license 10 years ago or some nonviolent theft, crimes that would never warrant taking your child away. And so now we have to fight these future separations. We're going to be going to court and saying the government has to provide us with this information immediately, and there has to be a process for pushing back. We cannot have families separated because of traffic violations. Uh I went down to the border uh, since our last conversation, Lee, on both the San Diego and the Tijuana side, and I got to see for myself. Uh, I did not see, as the president described, UFC fighters waiting to come into the border. But that all said, have you found in dealing with this and in through your discovery that it's ineptness or indifference that they've separated so many families and really haven't been overly motivated to put them back together? That's a very good question. I, I think it's... Uh, both. I think what we found is that they wanted to separate these children, they wanted to do this cruel thing, and they just didn't think about reunifying. They didn't think it through. And then when they started to realize, well, maybe we're going to have to reunify, there was an element of, we don't really even know how to do it. I mean, it, it's shocking. The, the fact that they would separate the kids is, of course, the most shocking. But I think the judge was right to also focus on the fact that they never really had any system for bringing the children back together with their parents. I don't actually even know what they thought was going to happen. They certainly didn't want to have these children as wards of the state when they started deporting the parents. But yet, that's what the result was. So that's why we had to go to Guatemala. We've been to Honduras, El Salvador, looking for these parents. What I'm afraid of is that there are, there are thousands more that were separated, that most of those parents have been deported and their kids are here, and we're going to be undertaking the same type of thing where we're going to be searching for these parents all over Central America, maybe all over the world. And again, I just make this point that uh, while I hope the almost all of the our audience doesn't think this is a morally good idea. It also, even if you're cruelly, you know, ambivalent is, it didn't work. It didn't deter anybody. And the idea to go back to it after the exposure about this flawed policy to me is beyond the bizarre. But anyway, Lee, uh, I appreciate the time as always. And, I, and again, we'll keep following up as to the progress you guys make in your suit. Thank you again for the time. Thank you for having me. When we come back, everyone, the Mueller report, it's going to be released this Thursday. And the president, he's already going on offense, even though he says he's been completely cleared. By the way, he hasn't. We will know for sure in a few days what is and isn't in the report. A former federal prosecutor will join us after the break to help us get ahead.